Hi guys, Paul from PM10 Racing here and welcome to my first proper tips slash instructional video. Now this video is going to be slightly longer than my normal ones, however, I'm going to show you the exact strategies that I use to save fuel on Gran Turismo 7. And if you are a fuel map tinkerer, then this one is especially for you. So why do you want to save fuel, Paul? I'm glad you asked. It might be because you're in a daily race C with the fuel consumption on. You might want to try a no-stop race. The pit lane time loss may be excessive, and the refueling rate might be slow. Or, like me, you take part in league racing, and the fuel multiplier is six, seven, eight times. Therefore, fuel saving becomes a necessity if you want to be competitive. Now, fuel saving might not be something you use a lot. However, it's worthwhile knowing and practicing, so you've got it up your sleeve just in case you ever need it. So that's my introduction out of the way, let's get into the testing and I'll show you my data as I go along. The event settings for this are all the same, we're at Monza, time trial mode, at 12 noon, there's no tyre wear on, the edge of the track grip is set to real and the fuel is 10 times, or times 10, and I'm in the Mercedes AMG GT3 16. Now I realise I'll be throwing a lot of numbers out during this video, but I'll do my very best to put them on the screen as we go along. I'll also put some timestamps in the description below should you wish to skip ahead. So first up we have a flat out run. This is going to be as fast as possible with no fuel saving just to get a benchmark time of what can be achieved in this car for me around Monza. We managed to average a 1 minute 51.762 with the fastest lap of 1 minute 51.258 using 24% of fuel per lap. Now that we have a baseline, let's see how my fuel saving strategies affect the lap times and the average fuel consumption per lap. Our first strategy for saving fuel is lift and coast. Now essentially what this is, is you lift off the throttle earlier than normal and brake slightly later than normal, therefore minimizing the time loss. What I'll do, I'll talk you through an example. I lift off 100 to 150 meters before my normal braking point I go past my normal braking point and hit the brakes hard. You can brake later as you're not carrying as much speed as normal so you can try and minimize the time loss that way. I'll just go through another example, going to the Della Rogers chicane, off the gas at 200, coasting all the way down to 100, hit the brakes down a couple of gears, hit the apex, no problem. And one more time, into the Ascari chicane, we're going to be off the gas nice and early, around about 250, we're going to coast all the way down to 100, past the 100, down two gears, hit the apex, and it hasn't affected our apex speed. Now this works because you're using a tiny bit less fuel on the way into the corners. Therefore, cumulatively, over many laps, you can save quite a bit of fuel. Now you have to pick and choose when you do this strategy, as it's not a good idea to do this if you've got someone right behind you, or if you're trying to defend a position. I tend to utilize this when I don't have any danger from behind. Now I think the technique is best used when coming into big braking zones as there are more benefits to be gained here. For example at Monza, you can use this into the three chicanes and into Parabolica. I'm only lifting off 100 to 150 meters before the corner, but as you can see my average lap time is a 1 minute 53.254 with an average fuel consumption of 21%. This means we've saved 3% of fuel versus the flat out run and it's cost us approximately 1.5 seconds per lap on average. Now to put this another way, we've used approximately 12.5% less fuel per lap compared to the flat out run and it's only cost us 1.5 seconds a lap. So it's not a bad start, however we can do better. Fuel saving technique number 2 involves using higher gears to go through and exit the corner. Now the reason this works is that you're keeping the revs down on the corner exit, therefore you're saving fuel. You can see in this example here, normally I would exit in second gear, but I'm actually trying to exit in third. 
Obviously don't use a higher gear if it causes an issue on the corner entry or corner exit, but experiment with it and just try and keep those revs down on the corner exit. Little example here into the Ascari chicane, normally I would enter and exit in third gear, however I'm going to enter in third gear, but I'm going to exit in fourth gear, just to keep those revs down just a little bit. On this run, I managed to average 1 minute 52.510, which was only 8 tenths off my average flat out lap time, with a fuel consumption percentage of 22%. My fastest lap was a 152.250, so we're within 8 tenths of a second per lap on average, whilst using 8% less fuel per lap. Now that's quite encouraging, but there's still a lot more we can do to reduce this even further. Enter my favourite strategy and the one I use the most when I need to save fuel. My favourite strategy for fuel saving is short shifting. This works as you're keeping the revs down so you're not using as much fuel but you still have forward momentum. The results will vary car to car so you might have to experiment with whichever car you normally use but the technique works very well. I'll show you a couple of examples. Notice here, instead of letting the rev counter fill up, see how I'm changing gear when the rev counter has only just started to show itself on the left hand side. You are reducing the revs and therefore the fuel consumption. Another quick example here on the way down to the Ascari chicane. Look how early I'm changing gears there. The rev counter is barely showing on the left hand side and I'm already changing gear. But we're still getting good top speed out of it. We're not slow. We've still got momentum. This is short shifting and it takes a tremendous amount of discipline and practice to be able to do it well and consistently, especially in a race. But it's a very worthwhile strategy to have up your sleeve just in case you need it. Although we're only using a small amount of revs, the result is quite surprising. We managed to average a 1 minute 52.411 with the fastest lap time of 1 minute 51.793, 5 tenths off my best run flat out. The most amazing thing about it though is that we managed to achieve those times using only 18% of fuel per lap. So put another way, with short shifting we've managed to average around 7 tenths of a lap slower than the flat out run whilst using 25% less fuel than the flat out run. I hope you can see how over a longer race distance or a longer stint how beneficial this strategy could be. Make sure you keep watching guys because later on I'm going to put all three strategies together and show you what can be achieved. Next up I wanted to include something for the fuel map tinkerers. I know you're out there. Personally I don't really use fuel maps as I don't think they can improve my fuel consumption or pace versus the strategies I've already outlined. I tend to leave the fuel map on one and short shift, lift and coast and gear up to save my fuel. Now I did do a test with fuel map 3 and fuel map 6 which are running on the screen now. With fuel map 3 my average time was a 1 minute 53.542 and I managed to use 20% of fuel per lap. So for me map 3 versus short shifting is a full second per lap slower and I've used 2% more fuel per lap. There was a much larger disparity on fuel map 6. I averaged 1 minute 55.420 and although I only used 15% of fuel per lap, I was still 3 seconds a lap slower versus the short shifting and only 3% improvement on fuel saving. Therefore for me, I don't think fuel map 6 is beneficial. However, with all that being said, as a little bit of a bonus, at the end of the video, I'll show you the only time I would normally use Fuel Map 6, other than in an emergency situation. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you what can be achieved by putting all the previous fuel saving strategies together. We're going to lift and coast, we're going to short shift, and we're going to use the higher gears to exit the corners. This is my ultimate fuel saving strategy, and it's something I use very very often. So my best Martin Brundle impression, I'm going to talk us through a lap. Got a good exit out of the Parabolica, down the start finish straight, short shifting all the way. I'm going to lift off the power around about 300 to 250, past the normal braking points, slam on the anchors,
Short shift into second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, all the way around Curva Grande. Just look how low the revs are when I'm changing gear. Keeping that fuel consumption down all the time. Going into the Della Roger chicane, off the power at 200, passing on braking points, down a couple of gears, we're exiting third, short shift up to fourth for Lesmo 1, where we're just going to have a tiny little dab of the brakes around, keep those revs down again into fourth, going to drop to third for Lesmo 2, power out again, short shift into fourth, into fifth, and into sixth. I'm going to come off the power around about 250, 200, go past the braking point, down a couple of gears, into third, I'm going to exit this in fourth, keeping those revs down all the time, short shift into fifth, and then into sixth. And we'll lift off the gas again, around about 150, brake nice and late, down into third, keep the revs down, shift up to fourth. I'm going to short shift again into fifth, and then into sixth to finish the lap. The end result of adding all these strategies together is quite astounding. I managed to average a 1 minute 53.051 with the fastest lap of a 1 minute 52.693. However, this was all done using only 16% fuel per lap. Compared to the flat out run, we're using 33% less fuel per lap, and we're only averaging 1.3 seconds per lap slower. These are my favorite fuel saving strategies, and they are strategies I use all the time. So, please do feel free to give them a go, Good luck with them and let me know in the comments how you got on if you do give them a go. Just as a quick bonus, I'll show you where the only occasion I would use Fuel Map 6. Now we've come to Tokyo Expressway East Outer Loop. Now anyone who's raced here will know it has a really long start finish straight and you're full throttle for a large chunk of it. So what I do is I wait until I get up to full speed, either around the finish line or at the top of the hill after the finish line and then I'll move my fuel map to 6 and what this will do it will save fuel between the point where you put it on 6 and braking for turn 1 so just as a quick example coming down to the start finish line reaching maximum speed I then flick the fuel map to 6 I'm going to run it all the way down to the first corner. Where I'll quickly put the map back on one again just before the braking zone. I'll put fuel map one and fuel map six side by side on the screen so you can see the difference in real time. Now I've got this on 20 times fuel just to try and demonstrate the point, but the actual fuel usage difference over that little stretch there is around about 6%, fuel map 6 versus fuel map 1, and it costs about 6 tenths of a second on that section. Now if you're really trying to save fuel and trying to eke out as far as possible, this may be a strategy you can utilise, but bear in mind you are going to lose some top speed. If you haven't seen this yet, watch this. Thanks for watching, take care.